Now, despite the efforts of the 2014 Animal Health and Welfare Act, the illegal activity of badger baiting continues to be a problem in this country. Difficulty in prosecuting cases and a lack of resources in combating the issue all play a role in what is perceived to be a particularly cruel blood sport. However, new efforts by Angartha Siakona and the continued work of the National Parks and Wildlife Service may provide some possible solutions. Our reporter Simon Tierney has travelled in the Midlands where the problem is particularly acute to investigate. Uh, Simon, good morning. Morning, Pat. Now, some listeners may find parts of this report distressing, so if you have particularly sensitive ears, you might want to turn down the radio for a few minutes. Now, Simon, what exactly is badger baiting and is it something that is, you know, bel- maybe belonging to Ireland's past or is it still there? Yeah, it's something that both belongs to the past and the present and also particularly, uh, I suppose, to rural Ireland. There's a long tradition of this blood sport. Now, it has been illegal since 1976, Pat. It involves the digging out and the baiting of badgers. The badger is a protected species under the Wildlife Act. I travelled to the Midlands. Um, I met Garda uh, Martin Walker, who's a superintendent who has been investigating cases. I also spoke with Noel Bugler, who is a, a conservation officer with the National Parks and Wildlife Service. And he brought me to some dig sites to try and explain how digging and baiting actually works. We're in a, a badger set. You can't mistake it for anything else. You've seen the amount of entrances. So somebody at some stage would have come here. They would have um, had terriers. A terrier would have been entered maybe up to a few metres away, maybe 10 metres away uh, into one of the holes. That terrier would have been underground in the dark looking for game, which inverted commas, looking for, for a badger, would have found it, would have then engaged with it. If it was a hard type terrier, it would have kind of gone straight for the badger and, you know, fought with it underground. In blood sports, where badgers are involved, you'll have two or three dogs who literally pull the badger apart. Uh, he's confined in his, in his space and the dogs are allowed in and then the dogs literally savage him to death. Very, very cruel and unusual sport. The terriers themselves have locator collars. So there's an electronic locator attached to the collar so the people overground will know where the terrier is underground and they'll know what depth it's at. Once the, t- once the terrier has the, the, the badger cornered more or less, like sometimes badgers will try and dig away from them or they'll try and go out past the terrier and escape and bolt. But if it's a good dog, as they say, that dog will hold the badger until they get down to it with, with digging. Once they dig down and finally, you know, if the dog has the badger pinned in a location, the badger then will have to be um, drawn from the hole. So you can do this in a couple of ways. You can literally catch it you know, the hunters can catch it and, and, and drag it out themselves by the, the rear end. Or there's badger tongs. It's literally like a tongs for coal, but for, you know, larger. You can lock onto the, the scruff of the badger's back with that and, and pull it out. Or more so now, they're using kind of draw dogs, maybe stronger lurchers, uh, bull lurchers, that will actually go down into the pit like this here and grab on and literally pull the badger out with their, you know, these very strong, strong jaws on them. And they'll get the badger up out of the ground. No, what have you got in front of you there? These are some photographs, some photographic evidence this is this is actually mild would you believe um compared to some of the stuff that you'll see you'll see you, you can see dogs with their lower jaws completely removed like if you look at this you can see it's a patterdell type terrier with injuries to its to its muzzle to its eyes to its face and along its lips here as well so that's consistent with badger injuries is uh, as badgers are fighting with a dog underground uh they're they're biting up so you'll have the lower lips can be torn off and the lower jaw can be actually removed. Even I've seen dogs where their, their, their nose has been chunks taken out of it. Take me through this lower photo. Okay, so this, this is a badger. Uh, you can see it. Its entrails are hanging out. That you guys discovered. Yeah, badgers were, sh- were, were turning up on, on sports pitches in an area and uh, they were obviously being killed by dogs. When we investigated that, we found that the badgers also had older injuries that had healed. So that indicates there was what we think was happening there then was that these badgers had been removed from the wild at some stage, brought to a location for fighting or baiting in an organised location and then their last hurrah was where they were released out on the sports pitches to be killed by by lurchers. My goodness, it's an incredibly cruel activity. Uh, Any indication as to the motivations of those involved? Presumably money is changing hands? Yeah, for sure, Pat. Um, There is a gambling element to it. This is a a so-called blood sport. Um, Sometimes the terriers can be sold uh, for their progeny. These are highly trained animals. Um, There's also this new 
concept of psycho poaching, um, which I asked Noel about in the next clip. I also asked Superintendent Walker about where exactly baiting is taking place in rural Ireland. It's endemic in, in certain areas of the countryside and I've seen the Midlands as being particularly vulnerable and open to this type of invasive hunting or cruel blood sport or whatever way you want to call it. That's how it's best described. It is something that's been going on for a long time, you know, going back to the 19th century where maybe badgers might have been brought to pubs and taverns for entertainment where badgers in barrels and stuff like that. Uh, dogs would be pitched against the badger. It is a culture, a subculture, and it has permeated down through the years from one family member to another. And you will also see that same resonance there in relation to uh, hair poaching. Because people, and I quote them, we have a, a God's given right to, to hunt on this land, unquote. And that's the attitude of a lot of them. You know, if you're looking to try and combat something, which we are as, as, as a wildlife service, you kind of ask yourself, why do people do it? So for this, there are quite a lot of reasons. One, it can be for money. Uh, if you have dogs that are regarded as being good and hard and, and ferocious on badgers, you can breed those dogs and you can sell the, the progeny of those dogs. So you can actually make money out of it. There's an element of gambling at a higher level, you know, in the more organised um, arenas. A lot of them will be motivated by, their, by the dogs and keeping the lines working. They have it as their heritage and the dogs as well, that they'll keep these dogs working, keep working, keep digging, carry on and keep digging, as they say. There's an element as well, an expression I think it was used in an English magazine, and it's in the last number of years with the advent of social media, and they call it psycho-poaching. And it's basically guys that want to sh- prove themselves as hard, and they'll post up stuff of stuff being ripped to pieces. To be honest, the dynamic between them and the more clandestine guys that are into the dogs themselves and continuing the breeds, who, who would never sell a dog, actually, who would only just get, uh, what they want is the dog to keep working. So they will give dogs away, and they will only give it to someone who will work it and work it properly. But so there is a dynamic between these guys with the dogs for the dog's sake versus the, the, the kind of psycho poachers, that they don't, that they hate to see that, this shining a light to a degree on their activities. The introduction of the Wildlife Act 1976, with the introduction of that piece of legislation, it outlined the uh, catching of badgers and baiting of badgers, and in fact interfering with badger sets all separate and individual offences under the Wildlife Act. So it's banned for since 76 essentially well there's absolutely no way I would use the word sport to include anything that involves cruelty to animals and I just find it absolutely appalling and okay the minister would have said to me that there were licenses for people to kill the badgers to, for the cull and that was supposed to be done in the most humane way possible but I know from people who are in touch with me that this was almost a, another type of license for people who are into you know animal cruelty and for whatever kind of psyche they have that they get pleasure out of seeing animals, you know, bleed to death. They get pleasure out of seeing animals suffer horrifically. And that's what we're getting. That's the information that we're getting about some of the, the, the cruelty. That's Maureen O'Sullivan, the uh, Dublin Central Independent TD. Um, badger baiting, it's a crime. Interfering with the set is a crime. All of these things are prosecutable. But is it difficult to get a prosecution and succeed. It is, Pat. This is a very clandestine activity, as you can imagine. Um, It's done, it's very cloak and dagger. Are there enough resources being allocated to this? This is what I asked my contributors in the next section. I started by asking Superintendent Walker about his current investigations and what can be done to enforce the law more effectively. We have a number of prosecutions under consideration at the moment, uh, but uh, we've had numerous operations, but prosecutions are quite difficult to secure. There are nefarious individuals involved in this. They keep a low profile. They are wildlife criminals, and more t- nine times out of ten, they have a different association with criminality. They may be actively involved in dog fighting, which is um, another cruel sport. They may be actively involved in, dr- in the sale and supply of drugs and criminality. So they, they, they're, they're serious criminals we're dealing with and they go underground and remain so. It's such a clandestine activity, it can be very difficult. What we have also done maybe is, you see photographs here of dogs that have been injured, so we would have gone in to try and catch people at a dig site. So in both situations, I think they kind of scarpered or fleed and left dogs behind. And this one here, this this white dog, um, kind of a hairy terrier, you see the injuries on its nose and, and around its mouth as well, it's chained to a fence. I have no doubt that the people who are involved in this are known to the local authorities. 
But I think that brings us into the area of enforcement of all animal welfare legislation. No matter what I bring up about animal welfare, whether it's the puppy farms or the, you know, the hair coursing or whatever, I'm told the legislation is there. But the difficulty is, is enforcing the legislation. And that's where the problem is. It's quite difficult to, to investigate the circumstances of a, of a breach of the law in relation to badgers unless we literally catch them red-handed. These individuals, unfortunately, they don't admit readily. And if you doorstep them, they're not going to make admissions after caution and complaints with the judge's rules. You'll be told where to go. Um, and unfortunately, the Wildlife Act doesn't provide us with a power to arrest and detain and question individuals, which is unfortunate. However, with the introduction of the Animal Health and Welfare Act in 2014, it is a, a tool in our arsenal which we often use and to facilitate an investigation. The, there is a dimension of cruelty to every case of badger baiting and that facilitates a power of arrest. But still very, very difficult to get the essential proofs to bring it to court. It comes down to not enough personnel who can do that. And there are times, and I know this from people around the country, where there is a fear of tackling some of these gangs, like the ones who are involved in this badger baiting. More recently, what we have started to do, and we have appointed 29 divisional inspectors in each division in the countryside, and they're going to be trained up in, in relation to field craft, into forensics, into the law in relation to criminal wildlife offences. And they will have their own little nucleus of, of wildlife officers. They're not specific to wildlife, it's just one of their portfolios of responsibilities. The badger is really important in our culture, in our heritage, in our literature. But, you know, I, I just feel that it's a terrible indictment of Irish people that we are just so oblivious to animal cruelty. And yet, I would have to say, in my years in here, I met amazing people who uh, just give so much in order to protect animals. Uh, Simon, a, a fascinating report. I mean, the badger is actually a nocturnal creature, quite a playful creature, will do you no harm, will run away rather than engage. Uh, but of course, these dogs are set upon them uh, deliberately to to engage them. And they have powerful claws for digging, which... Yeah, I mean, the, the badger is a formidable foe, but when it's on its own against one or two or even three terriers and a lurcher, which is used to sometimes draw the animal out of its uh, set, it, it, there's not very little that, that it can do to defend itself. This blood sport is marked by a particular level of cruelty that we've heard there. It is a protected species, and that's why hopefully more can be done going forward. Simon Tierney, thank you very much. And on the business of uh, badger baiting and blood sports, foxes suffer similarly in fox hunting, caught and ripped apart by packs of hounds, attacked by terriers and dug out when they tried to escape underground. That's from Phil. Why are they called blood sports? It's primeval savagery. That would be a more appropriate name. From Joseph. 